Hello, I'm Tim Durham uh, with Durham's Bee Farm in Walls, Mississippi, and uh, I'm going to make a video on two subjects that uh, some viewers wrote in, and my grandson, he's holding the camera this time, so I appreciate that. Uh, when when y'all send uh, a question in on YouTube, it comes in here like this, and uh, uh, Dallas Barrow from Brisbane, Australia, he wrote in, and that's neat. When when you write, tell us where you are. I, I find that in interesting, and uh, I told him that uh, you know we've been watching those terrible fires down there, and then uh, Rob Tripp from uh, Alberta, Canada, wrote in, and one question that he uh, really got my interest is uh, well one one question I want to comment on uh, is that he put a hive in a semi-heated uh, shed uh, now this comment can get kind of complicated so uh, uh, my my he said he said it gets to my, minus 30 degrees up there in Canada and and that's out of my league. I don't. Uh, I've, I've never had bees in that cold of the weather. I'm, I'm of the opinion that they definitely wrap their bees. Now we're uh, we're right adjacent to Memphis, Tennessee. We're in the northwest corner of Mississippi, and here you do not want to wrap your bees, and you do not want to put them in a heated environment. Uh, uh, and I would think the very same thing would would apply to Rob uh, if if he if the bees thought it was warm enough for them to get active and then they'll eat more food more honey and then they'll fly out where it's so cold they'll drop to the ground so you, you wouldn't want the bees to, to think that it's our art of, you wouldn't want the bees artificially uh, make it too warm, they fly out and then they can't get back because it's so cold. So, uh, uh, if you, and you know this, I've, I've done subjects on, you can take a, uh, a, a real small colony and put them on top of a large colony and have a screen between there where the, 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 the weak colony on top will benefit from the strong colony down below. When I say benefit, the warmth from the large colony will go up and keep the small colony warm enough. And, um, and uh, then you'll probably have to, have to feed them as well. Uh, and since I mentioned feeding, uh, now... Uh, Everything I tell you is my opinion, but so if I sound matter of fact, uh, like it's the only, th uh, uh, there's no other choice, uh, just forgive me, but uh, it's my opinion, the only best free feeder is uh, a three quarter inch plywood. You cut it, the dimensions of the hive, and then you drill, around, you cut around a hole in it so a fruit jar will fill it, fit in it, but not fall through. That is absolutely, it's cheaper, it's better. The bees can get right to it in very cold weather, and you cannot beat it. I, I would get in a discussion with anybody on that. So, and I've made some videos on that. Now. Another subject that comes up a lot is when you split your hive, uh, how many feet do you have to put it away? You know, I've always said you carry them off two miles and, and uh, then in two or three days you can bring them back. Uh, there can be a lot of variables here and you can, you can do it different. Uh, let's say you, you split your hive and a lot of people put a tree limb or something in front of the, the split uh, to make it make them think that they're in a new location. 
All right, a lot of people do that. Now, some of those old field bees will go back to the mother hive. Uh, uh, how far away should you make it? It doesn't matter. 10, 15 feet away. And you can always move them back later. But uh, uh, let's say that hypothetically that you split your hive, you put a tree limb in front of the split, and then you peek in there the next day and you see uh, there's not enough bees in there. There should be at least three frames, bees covering three frames of, of, of bees. So let's say that the, it does not have enough bees in there. So the next day, so you swap the, you swap the hives. Now the older field bees will be going into the split and, and pick up their number, you know, pick up the population. So there's many ways you can do it, and I, I don't don't want to get too complicated, and make it an hour long video. But uh, if y'all have any questions, right below this video, uh, uh, right below this video is is a uh, 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 my computer's going slow, but right below the video is a I'm gonna, I'm gonna uh, mute this. Is uh, right below the video is add a public comment. So you type in there your question or comment, and good Lord willing, I try to answer every video and let us know where you your your uh, uh, where you're located. So if you have any questions, let us know and and happy beekeeping. Hey, uh, yesterday I had a telemarketing call me, and and you know they. They 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 kind of rub you the wrong way, you know. Uh, you know you don't like them calling, but this telemarketing uh, he kind of talked kind of sassy and uh, didn't talk very friendly. And he told me said uh, uh, he couldn't understand me. And man, that that kind of rubbed me the wrong way. I said, well, punch one for Southern. <laughs> Hung up. All right. Bye.